rare and dangerous for Johanna Watkins to be exposed to the outside world. Okay. Allergic to almost everything imaginable, she's been living in isolation for the last two and a half years. But today, with her husband Scott by her side, Johanna is bravely making a journey into the unknown. She's moving to the new home that he's built to keep her alive. So extreme are her allergies, every second outdoors risks a life-threatening reaction. Oh, I throw up. It's okay to throw up. For a fleeting moment, okay. Scott is able to hold his wife in his arms. I love you with all of my heart. Welcome to your new home, my dear. The loving husband, whose very presence has the potential to kill her. <laughs> Johanna suffers from an extreme form of a disease called mast cell activation syndrome. Smells, dust, chemicals, food, light, even changes in air pressure can cause her body to attack itself. What hurts me most as a parent, though, is thinking of Johanna suffering. She can't have any human contact. When her siblings are in there, they have to wear a mask the whole time. They can't reach out and touch her arm like this. And if they do, she'll get sick. Hi, my name is Dr. Rubin. I'm a board-certified allergist. That story was from 2017 and is an extreme example of something called mast cell activation syndrome. But in order for me to tell you a little bit more about that, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about mast cells and some related disorders so you get a better idea of what some people are going through. Mast cells are a part of your immune system, the innate part of it, that is located in your connective tissues near blood vessels, the surface of your skin, respiratory tract, gastrointestinal tract, cardiovascular system, as well as some are in your brain, and they help surveil your body to see if there are any foreign invaders and help initiate part of that initial innate immune response, and they release various chemicals such as histamine to help bring awareness to that initial infection so that it can fight it off more efficiently. If you have a typical seasonal allergy to something like pollen, mold, or dust mites, or even a food allergy such as to peanut, tree nuts, or egg, that is caused by that food binding to a particular protein called IgE or immunoglobulin E, which is an antibody that can coat mast cells. And when those cells become activated, they release various chemicals that can cause mild or potentially severe life-threatening reactions known as anaphylaxis. In the case of mast cell disorders, it's not caused by immunoglobulin E typically, and it's due to either too many of those mast cells being produced, which is something called systemic mastocytosis. It could be something called hereditary alpha tryptosemia, where where these cells have a genetic mutation that produce a lot more tryptase than usual, or something called idiopathic mast cell activation syndrome, where this is happening and we don't fully understand why these cells keep activating. These various mast cell disorders increase the risk of these people having severe, potentially life-threatening allergic reactions known as anaphylaxis, which includes many symptoms, including problems breathing, wheezing, throat closure. They could have crampy abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, as well as having hives, flushing, or swelling of the skin, as well as having a lower blood pressure, which could lead to somebody passing out or shock in very severe cases. Diagnosing mast cell disorders can be rather challenging because it involves blood tests, 24-hour urinary collection, you may need a bone marrow biopsy as well, and sometimes it doesn't always pick up the right results, so you may have to do the testing multiple times, and it can be time-consuming and challenging, but it's important to be able to look through that diagnostic process for potentially mast cell-related disorders, but also making sure you don't miss anything else that could be going on because there are various diseases that can also look like mast cell disorders as well. Treatment mainly involves identifying the potential triggers and reducing exposure to them, taking medications that can help block the effects of products that are released from mast cells, which include antihistamines, leukotriene receptor antagonists, as well as mast cell stabilizers. And then there are some medications that may help in terms of reducing the number of mast cells in general, or trying to reduce the risk of mast cell activation with a medication such as omalizumab. In addition, I think it's really important for anybody living with mast cell disorders to have mental health services to help with various coping strategies to reduce stress because stress is a potent activator of mast cells and can increase the risk of having severe symptoms. 
Please let me know what you think about this information in the comment section. Share it widely so we can help raise awareness towards these various mast cell disorders. And if you want to learn more about your health, hit that follow button.